This is Dan Max, the trading agent. This is a stock trading and recap channel that I wanted to share to the masses. In a probability game, there's no certainty. Here are my insights and predictions. This is Dan Max, aka the trading agent, real estate agent with EXP Realty. This is November 19th, Friday. Options expiration? That's right, it's the third Friday of the month. OPEX, CHOPEX is over, finally. Jesus, it's just so annoying, this action this week. It's, it can be very frustrating and confusing even for people who've been doing it a long enough time unless you have the time to really understand what is going on, and then even then you will still get confused. Let's rip into Bitcoin first because this one's funny. I, you know, I know people are just not going to sell it, and I don't, I understand. And but if they had some uh, capital to buy, these are uh, areas that I thought were interesting. I drew in this green box because it goes all the way back. It's it was the peak in February last year. It was very a choppy area. You can see it kind of acted as resistance there. It got over it and then broke and failed. Once we broke over here, you can tell. In October, it took a little chop and then came over it, back tested it, popped, and then we back tested it. And we're in there again today. What do I say here? Have I been saying big cup and handle? The handle can be sloppy, choppy, can kick your ass all over the place. If you are stopped out here, you should have been buying back down in the 57,000 range we talked about. Could have gone lower. Of course it does. We don't know who sells the last shares or the last coins that take it to the low that's just not what you're trying to predict you're trying to predict where that's gonna puke is gonna happen where the you know where everything starts to flip so yeah that's bitcoin for the day let's um just keep it in mind i mean i, I watch this area over the weekend it could get light volume and get kind of nutty but that's bitcoin everybody knows over the weekends it can get a little wild let's get into it uh let's talk about roblox so here's the one that we have made bukus of dolores on doing well on we broke the downtrend we said we'd get up probably the two times range we started taking most of our profits yesterday and for the grace of god for the people who didn't sell any yesterday you had a retest literal retest you got very lucky because the tesla holders don't really know about that one especially when it came to the volatility of the price Tesla compressed up there. This had a big move. I mean, it got up to 139 and closed at 126. You know, $13 back fill. Well, we got up there to 138 and pulled back. So, long story short, either you're hedged or out, you know, or have a little bit to run. I mean, greedy, greed kills here. If you don't take profits, the market will. I don't care at this point because the risk versus reward really isn't my favor. Now, it could go up and go nuts and absolutely bonkers to 200 could it there'll be pullbacks there'll be volatility i like to take the easy money yesterday when i had you know conversations with folks selling or thinking about selling on the pullback i was like i wish you were paying attention to the two times range at the 137 area plus because you could have sold then but now at 125 126 127 whatever i mean it even got down to like 120 at one point didn't it yeah the 120 is like now do you want to sell and it's like well shit you missed 18 points like that is painful mentally to deal with well you got lucky if you waited and hopefully you took some that's that's how you sh that's how you manage the market you take gains when they need to be taken and you just you gotta be smart folks you just gotta be smart oh man let's uh i apologize something here i hit the one button it did something yeah, let's get into Rivian real quick we talked about this potentially trying to be a buy it was a sloppy crazy son of a you know what why is it not save my fibonacci we were looking at the 140 initially i'll get into i'll show you the intraday that didn't work and then we we're looking at this fib area 126 and then ultimately we this mouse drives me crazy uh, looking at some of the price levels yeah this gap filled we talked about that could be an interesting area of course it violated it temporarily and now it popped back over it today it gapped up and it made a higher high but did not make a lower low so it could be flipping trend just keep it that simple i know it's not very obvious maybe at the moment but let's just watch it i mean th this is the kind of personality of stocks you have to be careful with because they can do some crazy ass shit see we looked at it at 135 140 luckily it, it opened way down the day that it closed at one like 140 plus and then we waited and man it, it stopped me out and you know what today it gapped up i didn't get any i'm out of it 
you know, it it chopped me out. I mean, I lost a few points on it. Nothing to get butthurt about, but yeah, we'll be watching. I like the close. Now, again, if you close nearer the lows on a Friday, I'd be watching the 618. Now, you can say, hey, 126 to 128 area is a buy. Let me just write that in there. So, 126, 128, buy zone. And just have a stop. I mean, you really have to keep it that simple. Let's just use this fib area. I like to see that chop, 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 down, down. Someone had stopping power, bounced exactly up to the 50 fib and failed. This is where sometimes trading can get difficult, even for people who've been doing it a long time, wide and loose. It's never easy to know for sure. That's Rivian for you. Low float, a lot of people interested, going nuts all over the place. It's it's really that simple. EXPI, this is the company I work for stock. What do we say? Watch the 40 level. It gapped down today. Didn't really act that well. Again, it's OPEX. I thought it might be tied to the 40 area. We talked about this yesterday. The volume kind of sucks. This is trading sometimes. You don't know. So if you stopped out, you're out. But you can always buy back in if it if this is a bear trap and just a temporary. Because that's one of the things about head and shoulders is that head action can be really frustrating. Because you're like, I think this is the bottom. And it looks like a double bottom. And then it goes down and it creates its head. And then it pops and there's a shoulder. Again, you have to have seen it to understand it. And you can you just have to have your stops. If you get stopped out on the head... We showed that GDX trade, and what did what happened? It literally came right back to form a head and shoulders. It was really obvious. It was really easy. It wasn't anything difficult. So just keep that in mind. Know your levels. Know what's going on. Have stops. Play the probabilities. Just don't don't be mind dead, whatever you want to call it. Don't just bury your head. A lot of people just don't want to own their mistakes. The dollar, Turkey's having an issue, and then now Europe's going into full lockdown mode. I don't know why, but that's what they want to do. I understand COVID is a problem. It's going to be around for a long time, but I just don't think lockdowns are the solution. But that's not for me to decide. I don't want, you know, this isn't about politics at this point. It's best what's best for everybody, and I just don't think lockdowns are the solution. So that's all I can really say on it. I don't know the ultimate solution, so I won't go into it any further. I hit the wrong button there. I apologize. Let's get in. But just watch the dollar. If it's going higher, people are scared. They're putting money into the dollar because those other economies are just putting themselves in the penalty box. That's literally what it is. And when they go into the penalty box, people buy U.S. Treasuries. And they did that today. We talked about this blue area in popping. We closed right under the downtrend. This is, this is tough. But what do we think? An oversold bounce is coming. The volume is not great, but... There's stuff going on in the world. People buy the dollar. It's that simple. Senior VIX. Uh, w bottom, we said holding the 20-day, compressing. What did I say earlier today? I said we might back up. Definitely did. We backed up. The 20 days is the key. The VIX holds above 20. There is going to be a spike at some point. It's just natural. So market could sell off, but that's you have to know your risk. You know, if you're hundred percent long with everything all in here at the highs don't be surprised when you get a pullback because that this has been a nice move you have the chop x from opex maybe it breaks down next week but or maybe it starts ripping higher there's there's no easy answer but the best answer is take profits have a plan and just know that anytime you're in overbought conditions you need to be selling some and if you're in oversold conditions you need to be covering your some shorts or looking for buys it really can be that easy. Let's get into the QQQ because this is one that I'm watching for potential failures next week. We're retesting into this pennant. I mean, I might as well just stretch this thing out and just just watch it. You know, I don't know for sure if we're topping out, but this action, this this up move, and then making a higher high. Let's just see if it turns into a head and shoulders, or do we break out? I mean, it's so hard. And this is the thing about people don't understand is we've never had this fiscal accommodation of easy money for so long well if the bonds are going lower aka people are buying tlt then maybe the market can go higher and it just screams higher it's just there's nowhere else to put your money like you're not putting in a savings account when i grew up you get five six seven percent interest rates your savings rate your money market rates were amazing now pff, you're lucky if you get even one percent it's an absolute joke at the bank gld got slapped around today i 
why who the fuck knows 172 50 strike on the gld 172 173 holding high and tight i would not be surprised if it pulled back there are some factors going on coming into december with the uh contract rollover that could be selling but people are trying to get a hold of their gold and silver we'll talk about that in silver in a minute gdx we saw it popping now it's pulling back 20 days should hold let's draw a channel because this might ultimately be where it gets to you just have to keep it real simple would not be surprised if it did that now you see there's kind of a, a channel forming here i didn't just make that up and without thinking about it but this is, might be the angle of ascent just like this was the angle of descent if you drew out the channel you you know you had a, an angle of descent very very clear sometimes that's how it goes but anyway just keep an eye on it it could pull back there's no guarantees if it pulls back to the channel lows it's probably gonna be where the 50 day is that would be a screaming buy in my opinion just go with that ag Good old AG pulling back a little hard today, 100 day. If you bought it here and it pulled up, you said it, we said very clearly it's going to hit this blue zone and probably chop and back up. It's backing up. If you want to buy some, here's your opportunity. KL got slapped around today. Why? Who knows? Choppy, choppy, sloppy, choppy. Looks remind me you of know, Bitcoin and gold miners. They're all kind of acting sloppy, choppy. I don't necessarily think they're going to get crushed, but hey, people are. Uh, taking profits on the things they're up on it just is what it is watch it watch the 100 day again make a higher low that would be really nice maybe it's just like going to turn into a little wedge formation we'll draw it when it gets there but keep that in mind always think about what's coming silver this is interesting because the silver contracts man people are taking their silver they're taking their silver futures contracts and calling them in people want the silver it was down a little bit today it's natural i'd love to say it'd go up and you know every day is an up move but let's just keep it for what it is at this point this is your channel that's all you need to know it looks like now with this potential um pullback you can oh, jesus you can see where uh it might be pulling back to and keep it real simple also too here you're starting to get some angles of ascent let's see if that ends up being such but I don't, I'm not bearish silver, that's for sure. Letter X, what do we say about this one? It was going to fill the gap. 200 day would be great. Well, you're not there yet. I don't know if it gets down there. Today's volume is shit. Don't really take too much into it. It's a W pattern. We should go up every day, but it doesn't. If you're along it, just have a plan. AMD we talked about this guy getting up to retest the, uh, red uptrend if you're not taking any profits up here your profits will get taken at some point i just don't know from what price play the probabilities because they're not in the favor of the bulls at this point it just is what it is i mean it could go higher but you're playing with fire there this is interesting we talked about this apple we said if invalidate the head and shoulders top we're going higher i can remove that it's clear we broke the green downtrend. Look at the volume screaming higher. This has been a great trade the last couple days. I don't see it not getting to the upper trend line area, 168. Will it get there tomorrow, Friday, or next week? Who knows? But it looks good. Could have some pullback days and chop. MicroStrategy, this is one that we've talked about being a retest of the high and then backfilling. I like it down here. I just don't. I'm, I'm going to wait. I am, I'm going to wait on this guy, and let's just, this is what I'd like to do. Let me draw it clearly. Do, 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 do. I'd like to draw some sort of descending trend line to kind of play against that to see it break out and over. You can do the same. This volume is interesting into the close today. It was pretty uh, strong, and it didn't make lower lows into the close. Somebody clearly held the bottom of it. I think you can break you know 730 area you might be able to play the break out and above of the downtrend because this is pretty pretty strong down you know last time you had something down like that look at what it did it popped right back i wouldn't be surprised this is a volatile stock just keep an eye on it probably a buy at some point tesla said the 20 day got a hold above it so far so good maybe you get the double top this was a you know two days tight range and then it pulled back tesla's a monster i don't ever recommend really shorting it unless it is super obvious and picking the first top is not super obvious as i always tell people the first 
mouse gets trapped, the second one gets the cheese. Well, if it's a double top, wait for it. And if it breaks out, great. Good for the bulls. At this point, you know, just play it for what it is. Pen, pen. 52.50 strike pinage. <laughs> holding at the very bottom of the blue range. I am still in it. I am holding. I have time. My stops are manually being watched and going to be put in if needed. I know he's buying a ton of stock. I know the company is down here. Let's see what happens. Patience. Have your plan. If you get stopped out, you can always re-back, rebuy back in. XOP. What do we say? 20 day, get out. 50 day, or this moving uh, fib and the 50% fib, get out. Well, it doji sandwich. A doji sandwich is a doji in between two big candles, and usually the following direction will continue. This is what you got right here. Here's an example of a doji sandwich. Big red, doji red, had more continuation. You see it here and in between, you know, some of these trades. I would be, I'd be careful with it. I don't know what level XOP is going back to, but we'll figure it out when it gets there. Valet, Scott, this is your favorite. This is pulling some sort of W pattern. It had an interesting day. It did not close anywhere near the lows. The candle's red, but it closed above yesterday's, you know, opening, which is interesting to me. It's trading at a whopping three times future earnings PE. That's crazy. It's so cheap. Someone's going to buy that. You should be buying it too. I know I should be too. I know, Scott, you got it. Pass broke the down channel here. 20 day. Nothing to really say. Exxon Mobil. Oh, yeah. That's ugly. Gap down. We said watch this area. I mean, this is sometimes what happens. You're in a trade and you're waiting for a level and boom. If you got your stops knocked yesterday, you're very thankful that the gap did not get you today because, I mean, 60, I mean, that's a $3. You know, that's 5% in ExxonMobil, which is a lot because that stock doesn't usually move a ton. So sometimes that's what happens. And this is what the thing about being over leveraged at the highs. So if you bought the stock and it started tipping over, you know how I'm saying take some profits up here. Well, now you could, now when it pulls back, you're not all in and you're just crapped on yourself because gaps happen. I mean, it could have been a downgrade today. I didn't, I'm not, I, I, I don't know the reason. But that's always possible. And so that's where taking gains up near the highs allows you so that if this happens, you're not fully invested. Maybe you got your hedges on. You're not feeling so terrible. I mean, you just have to think about it from the perspective of probabilities. And I know a lot of people just need help with that. So that's where I recommend come into the Discord room. Ask questions. Watch the Back to Basics series. I'm, I got to pump out at least 500 more. There's, there's plenty of things we need to talk about. But... Yeah, I'm here to help you guys. If you have questions, just pop in there. Please subscribe, share. You know, the more people that follow this, the more content I'm going to produce. It's just a matter of time. That's what I'd like to do. I mean, I, trading is my first passion. It's something I know a ton about. And I apologize at times because I know I'm talking over people's heads. But I also know that people need to do their homework and learn this. This isn't Japanese. This isn't a you know Mandarin or some completely foreign language. It's I'm going to try to bring analogies that are, you know, resonant to gambling and also just in general how you manage risk if you are at a casino or doing some sort of calculation of risk with an investment. That's trading. It's probabilities, you know. This is if, the, if you owned a house very cheap and you bought it in the 50s and it went up and it's up, you know, 20, 30 percent and you're an investor and you're looking to sell house casino whatever taking profits you know putting some in your pocket refinancing whatever you want to do cash out refi like pull the money out so you can put it other places that's the missed opportunity and the opportunity cost of always being all in all right well i hope everyone has a great weekend this is the weekend recap dan max at exp aka the trading agent if you have questions i'm around this weekend it's thanksgiving's coming up so i hope everyone is doing well and safe travels we'll talk to you soon have a good weekend. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you like the content. Also smash the like button, share with your friends, and add a comment. If there's a topic or stock you'd like me to give you insight about, let me know in the comment section. I'll do my best to answer your question. Thanks.